Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicparoles.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I wanna show you how to combine multiple audio interfaces together so you can make the best use of all of the inputs and outputs you have at your disposal. Let's just assume that you're trying to record an entire band worth of tracks all at the same time. But one audio interface just doesn't cut it. You don't have enough inputs on that one interface to record every member of that band or every single microphone or input of that band. So you need to bring a second audio interface into the picture just so you have enough inputs. Or maybe we're talking about a multi-mic drum kit. And again, you just don't have enough inputs on that one device for all of the microphones you wanna use. Whatever the case may be, there are a couple of ways to go about this. And I wanna show you two of probably the most common ways. Number one, physically connecting one interface to the other using ADAT. And number two, using software on your Mac in the audio MIDI setup window and tethering or aggregating these multiple interfaces together, not through physical cables, but through software. So let's dig into that right now. First, let's talk about ADAT. Now, obviously for this occasion, you're going to need more than one audio interface. In this case, we're gonna need two. And the first audio interface, we're gonna call the main audio interface. And this is probably your preferred interface nine times out of 10. It's your highest quality device, though there doesn't have to be a quality difference. It's just the one you like to use. And then the second device is going to be called the extender. It's not the main audio interface and we need to get sound from that extender out of the extender into your main interface using an optical cable. And if I bring up Safari here, let's bring it up right now. I have an example of an optical cable right here to check out. What we're going to need on each interface in terms of optical ports or ADAT ports is the following. Your main interface needs at least one ADAT port, which is an ADAT in port. And on the extender, you're going to need at least one ADAT port and that's the ADAT out port because we want sound to go out of your secondary interface, the extender into your main interface and then Logic is going to be paying attention to your main interface for recording audio. And optical is kind of cool because the way that the audio is transferred is via light. Now, ADAT doesn't have to only go in one direction. It doesn't have to only go from the output of your extender to the input of your main interface. You can send audio from the output of your main interface into your secondary interface. And that's how I have my system set up. I have a Symphony desktop in an ensemble, and I have the output of the Symphony desktop connected to the input of the ensemble, and then the output of the ensemble connected to the input of the Symphony desktop. And this allows me to send audio to different headphone outputs or different outputs on the ensemble, or I can send audio being recorded into the inputs of the ensemble into the Symphony desktop. Next step is to set the clock source for the master interface. We want to slave the master interface to that of the extender interface. Now, what does all of that mean? Basically, we just need to make sure that both audio interfaces are marching to the same drum in terms of timing. Otherwise, we could get pops or clicks or artifacts actually recorded into the audio in Logic Pro. And typically, the way we go about this is to slave the master interface to the timing of the extender. And you're going to do this using the mix control software of your audio interface. Now, obviously, if you don't own Apogee interfaces, your mix software is going to look a little different than mine, but the approach should be the same. I'm going to open up two different control windows here because I have two different Apogee interfaces, and we're going to focus on Apogee control, the original interface here. And if we take a look right over here, there's an option to set the clock source, and we could set the clock source from the internal clock of that interface to that of the ADAT interface or the optical interface. So in this case, I'm going to swap from internal to ADAT one through eight. Okay, now we're all set. We just need to choose the sample rate at which we want to work. So let's head to Logic Pro. And if you don't see the sample rate here at the top, just right click or control click anywhere in the control bar, customize your control bar, and let's include the sample rate and punch locators. So right here, if we click on that number, 44.1, we can choose you know, through a variety of different sample rates. I'm gonna stick with 44.1, but obviously you could change the sample rate in Logic. The problem here is, is that our main audio interface, in this case, the ensemble, is slaved to the clock of the extender interface, which is the Symphony desktop. 
So if we change the sample rate, the audio interface won't know to change as well because it's not paying attention to logic for sample rate information. So we need to change the sample rate as well on the extender interface. On the extender interface of your choice, it may be different, but in my case with the Apogee Control 2 app for the Symphony desktop, I can go right into sample rate here and change the sample rate within this window. I'm gonna leave it alone again because we're just gonna work at 44.1. All right, now we just need to make sure that our master interface is the one that's selected in Logic's audio preferences. So let's go right up there to Logic Pro, preferences, audio, and under the output and input device, you wanna make sure that both are set to the same audio interface. In this case would be the ensemble. Now, because I'm filming, I can't select the ensemble as the output device, but just keep that in mind, that both of these should say ensemble. Now that we have the sample rate of the extender audio interface set identically to that of Logic Pro, it's time to record some audio. And I'm going to record a clean DI guitar into both the Symphony desktop and the ensemble and record both at the same time into Logic Pro. And the way I'm going about this is I have a Boss tuner that has two outputs on it. So I basically am splitting the guitar signal to each interface so we can record directly into the ensemble and then into the Symphony desktop through the optical input on the ensemble into Logic Pro. So let's set that up right now. I have an audio track here with an input set to the first input on the ensemble. That's analog one. And we need to create a new audio track and set this audio track to that of optical two which is the second input on the Symphony desktop. So it's optical two. And if you don't see these labels in the input section in your version of Logic, you just go right up to mix and go down to IO labels. And right here, you can see that we can switch the naming scheme from that of just generic, you know, input one, input two, to that provided by the driver, which is your audio interface. So uh, you just click on each of these and you can swap between them. That's the way you can change the name if your audio interface and driver provides a naming scheme for the different inputs and outputs of your audio interface. Cool, so we can differentiate between the two. Let's name the first track Ensemble and let's name the second one Symphony. And we're gonna try to record this guitar to both tracks at the same time and see if we're successful. Let's try it right now. Okay, so we can see there's some audio, but no audio is passed through the optical inputs of the ensemble from the Symphony desktop. That's because there's a little more like work in getting this set up. So let's head to the Apogee Control 2 software, which is specific to the Symphony desktop. And we need to go right over here to the right side of the mix software and set the optical out to that routing instead of a playback system to that of the hardware input. So it could be either analog in one or two or we can just set it to in one and two. So let's do that right now. If I try playing my guitar again, okay, we can see some audios passing through. Let's take a look at Logic to see if we're seeing any audio in this channel strip here. So we're gonna turn on software monitoring. Okay, now we're getting some audio. So I'm just gonna turn that off for now and hit record and we'll see audio record to both channel strips. Okay, cool, we've got audio to both channel strips. This is amazing. We're all set up and ready to go, and the ensemble is accepting audio from the Symphony desktop because we had the Symphony desktop route inputs one and two to the optical outputs of the Symphony desktop. Now, if we zoom in, this is a thing that I wanna show you because it's something that many folks might not be aware of. If we zoom in super close, right, we've recorded the same exact guitar at the same time. The guitar cables are the same length between the interfaces and the clocking should be the same, so the timing should be the same. But if we take a look here, right, if we zoom in way close and let's do that, we can see that there's a bit of a difference between where the audio is landing from the different inputs. And if we split this up, this is just a real general case here, but if we go to the file editor here, 
when we zoom out on this selection, let's make sure everything's selected, or rather that one's selected. We could see that there's a difference roughly of 14 samples between the two bits of audio, even though they should be the same exact timing. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong here. It's just a scenario that can crop up when it comes to ADATing devices together or aggregating devices together as well. Now, if you're recording a vocalist and a keyboard player and a guitarist all at the same time, just with one input for each instrument, then this difference makes no difference to you. But if you're recording a multi-mic drum kit, eight samples, 14 samples, they can make a difference in terms of the tonality and the phase relationship of the different input signals. So just something to keep in mind. You could use the sample delay plugin in Logic Pro to make any sort of incremental adjustments or a third-party plugin. All right, that's the way you would go about using hardware. And as I promised, there's a software way of going about this as well. If you don't have optical inputs and outputs on your audio interfaces, no problem. Your Mac actually provides a way to use software to connect these interfaces together. We're going to navigate to the audio MIDI setup window. And the way I'm going about this, I'm using Spotlight. I just hold command and press space bar for Spotlight to pop up. You type in the app of your choice, hit return, and here's the audio MIDI setup window. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to create an aggregate device for these two different interfaces. So instead of having to physically connect the interfaces together, we could just tie them together within this MIDI window, this audio MIDI window, and then we can choose the aggregate device in Logic Pro. So let's do it right now. You can see I've done it a few times, but if you go to the bottom left-hand corner, we can create a device and we're going to create an aggregate device. And we're going to call this aggregate device, you just click on the name and you can type in any name of your choice. So we'll say both interfaces. Next up, we're going to pick our interfaces. I'm going to select the Symphony desktop to use. And then we're going to select the ensemble to use. You can see Logic is kind of freaking out because it wants to know, do I want to use that interface or any other interface that's available? I don't. So going back to the audio MIDI setup window, we're going to select now the ensemble, All right? So now we have the choice of a clock source, like how we had to choose an interface to be in charge of the timing of the two interfaces when we connected them. We can do the same thing here. In the case of the clock source, you don't necessarily pick the extender device. You probably want to pick your main interface that is of high quality that you rely on. So I'm going to stick with the Symphony desktop here. And I'm going to leave the sample rate to that of the Logic project, so 44.1. And in this case, the aggregate device sample rate should change if you change the sample rate in Logic Pro. You don't have to change it on the devices themselves. The only other detail here is we need to set the drift correction for that of the ensemble. Because if you have two audio interfaces that are not physically connected and sharing clocking information between them, in that case, we need our Mac to ensure that both of these interfaces are, again, marching to the same drum in terms of timing. So the Symphony desktop is the clock source. The ensemble needs its drift correction or its drift to be corrected to that of the Symphony desktop. So once you have that set up, ready to go, we have all the inputs and outputs of both devices via software. We can go to Logic Pro, Preferences, Audio, and under the input and output devices, we can now select that aggregate device, both interfaces. And you should see all the inputs and outputs available within the inputs and outputs, you know, in Logic Pro once you select it. And you should be good to go aggregating these multiple devices. So that means you could potentially aggregate more than just two interfaces. And in fact, if we take a look at the audio MIDI setup window, you can even aggregate software if your software has a driver as well. So in this case, as I film this video, I'm using a product called ScreenFlow from Telestream and I've aggregated the Telestream driver to that of the Symphony desktop. So software to hardware, which is pretty cool. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Per Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicPerRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.